squeeze in our interventions. All right, this uh, round table has as its title Lessons Learned, specific cases. So today we've had, we have with us not only people committed in the fight against human rights, people coming from civil society, from uh, organizations. Here we have Fernando Andreu. He is, uh, well, within his competence, he, he, he is investigating crimes against humanity. And well, to start off quickly, let, I also I would like to move on to say that Jose Estever, he is the lawyer of the Tiber case in Spain. He is one of the experts, the most, he is one of the most remarkable experts, um, in the case in the case of genocide at Tibet and for many years now he is being holding this jurisdiction supporting this jurisdiction together with the committee for the support of Tibet with the Alan Cantos, he is uh, not a legal uh, lawyer, but he's nearly a lawyer, and he has been accompanied us in all the fights that are worthwhile fighting for, and he has also investigated the crimes committed by the Birmania military uh, from uh, Birmania military. Council. He is the doctor, doctor, he has a PhD in, inter, in public international law and international relations, and he is a teacher at the University of Valencia. So do you have 20 minutes to, well, to tell us about uh, your case, and then we will move on to questions and answer between ourselves. Red Brody, he is the legal counselor and spokesperson of Human Rights Watch. He is the main lawyer of the victims in one of the most remarkable cases. Um, uh, well, considering how things are going, I think this is the only case that we will, where a life dictator will be prosecuted uh, 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 well, through universal uh, jurisdiction. Well, unfortunately, Pinochet was dead. Okay, he was never prosecuted. So, uh, well, hopefully, this uh, prosecution will take place uh, against the dictators of uh, Shad. He is the African Pinochet, as we has been named, and he has been the own power for many years, and then, well, well, the case, the case has been on for many years now. It was very close to the detention of Pinochet, and so fortunately, well, soon we will have, uh, we will see uh, the end of the results. He has also um, investigated killings in uh, Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. Uh, he has been an observer of human rights in Salvador. He has been the executive secretary, secretary of the International Commission of Legal Experts. And he has also been the head of the public prosecutor, also the assistant of the public prosecutor of the state of New York. So Fernando Andreu, he is magistrate. He works at the Central Court of uh, Instruction, number four. So despite his, due, uh, his young age, he's been working in the National Court, Criminal Court for many years now. And he deals with uh, corruption and organized uh, crime. And he is, he has researched cases of crimes against humanity, such as the Rwanda genocide, or crimes committed by the Patriot military in Rwanda and in the 
Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo. For you to have a feel and to understand uh, what we mean when we are talking about this genocide, we are referring to that we are referring to the trying, trying of some people who are in power in Rwanda at this point in time. And he is also dealing with the diaspora case in Iran. So Wolfgang Kalek now, he is the Secretary General of the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights. He is a German, he's a lawyer, he's the Secretary General and the co-founder for the European Center for Human Rights, uh, Constitutional uh, and Human Rights. And he is a member of the Advisory Center of the Center for Law and European Policy from the University of Bremen, as well as a member of the Forum of Penal Law and International, Human, uh, International Humanitarian Penal Law. For, since 1998, he is fighting against the military council in Argentina for the killings and enforced disappearances of German citizens during the dictatorship. He has asked for the detention of his, the US uh, military and as well as the vice president, uh, ex-vice president, Donald Rumsfeld, due to the conditions regarding the arrest of the detainees at the US prison of Guantanamo. He is investigating the tortures carried out by uh, two um, citizens from Germany and to France, as well as the illegal activity of secret prisons of, from the CIA in Europe. And he is also the lawyer of Edward Snow. She would probably tell me off, but I cannot finish here without adding the following. It is a comment, same as in Spain, Belgium. We find ourselves clearly in a recession or going backwards, but a universal jurisdiction in continents like Africa, well, it'll be very important, as Red said, in the international criminal court and the way it is seen in the African Union. And, and that's why it seems that the new attorney at the International Criminal Court might think in this line, um, considering the approach that has been mentioned by Mr. Clegg and that had been turned down before about those uh, people from the military. Still, in Latin America, it seems there's a change going the other way around. So they are going in the different direction, a different direction than Spain. And it's not just that today, a federal judge, Maria Cerverido, who could come to Spain, and she is looking into Franco's uh, regime crimes, something that in this country they decided it was not possible to prosecute. I think it is just a pattern example of how to interpret the principle of universal jurisdiction. But it is also true that in Argentina they are starting some initiatives referring to lodging claims against a stranger and other repressors in Paraguay. And also in the Hache or group, ethnic group. And so this has been brought to a trial in Argentina to be prosecuted according to universal jurisdiction in Mexico, where there are many contradictions, though there's been a change in paradigm to try and abide by all the conventions and prosecute all those kinds of uh, crimes. The Inter-American Court of uh, Human Rights is systematically promoting the withdrawal of impunity rules. Peru is leading and is resisted after Barrios Altos' case and Tuta's case, 
well, they are resisting the interest of conservative people in the Supreme Court to change the law against impunity. And then in Argentina, for example, trying to look into everything that has to do with the Condor, Condor Plan. But, uh, of course, uh, Uruguay, Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Chile. Again, with the Europe, Spain, that in the past with Belgium led uh, universal jurisdiction as a principle, and now we're going backwards. And then the target countries, target of those actions uh, where they were res uh, responsible for uh, or the culprit, now they've overcome that stage and they are taking actions. They are being proactive now. So victims, which in the end are the driving force, the continuous driving force for these dynamics, they are to find remedy, they are to be taken care of, and so that everything is made to prevent this from happening again. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of this panel. Then Maria explains how we move on, and see you back in a minute.